Coming up on Midco Sports tonight, it's all about high school football. We'll bring you our top players from each class in both North and South Dakota. Then it's an FCS playoffs preview. South Dakota is in Thibodeau, Louisiana this weekend to take on Nickel State. We'll tell you what you need to know about the matchup. And finally, a preview of our live men's basketball game for tonight, Florida A&M at North Dakota State. All of that plus much more, Midco Sports Tonight kicks off right now. Hello and welcome to the show. Well, every Wednesday we try to bring you a list of top players, moments, or games. And today is another form of a list. We've got top players in each class of high school football in North and South Dakota. And we're going to look back at the best players in our area and name a Midco Sports High School Football Player of the Year for each class. So to get it started, let's bring in Tom Neiman and Jason Andera to start handing out the awards in South Dakota Class 11 AAA. All right, Stuart, it was, it was a great football season again in South Dakota in high school football. I know you're sad that it's over. All state teams will be coming out here pretty soon, but this is your players of the year in South Dakota high school football. I know you do things your own way. <laughs> do them a little different at times. What, what's the criteria? What did you look at? It's not necessarily you had to be on a state championship team, although a lot of them are, but what were you looking for in your players of the year? You know, it just so happens that a lot of times the state championship teams do uh, actually determine who is the best player in the state, but... You know, injuries come into play. Sometimes you've got to talk about, uh, you know, some circumstances where some players aren't playing full games because they're winning by 50 points. So you have to take that into consideration. And then you just got to talk to a lot of coaches. That's what I try to do. I try to talk to as many coaches as possible to get their input because they're the ones that are really watching these guys week in, week out. All right, we're going to run down all seven classes in South Dakota, starting with 11 AAA in Sioux Falls, Washington. The three-peat this year. Obviously, a little bit of a dynasty brew in there, and we're going to take a look at some of the candidates in 11-3A, the big class in South Dakota. These are the guys. Why? Came down to three guys. I mean, so many players in 11 AAA, so many big teams, but I think there's just three players to make a legitimate claim as the most valuable or the top player in the entire class. I mean, I considered guys like Cade Tervere of Brandon Valley, Isaac Strzok, Canyon Bauer had wonderful years for O'Gorman, and of course on Washington, you just can't stop naming guys. Jaden Johansson, Logan Utech, Zach Hines, the rest of the gang, Will Farniak, then Nick Hookstra, you know, McCormick had a big year for Roosevelt. But when it really comes down to who made the most difference, you got to start with these three guys. And let's start right now with Seth Benson. Maybe one of the best defensive players I've ever seen. He played quarterback and receiver as a freshman and a sophomore. Remember that, Tom? Oh, yeah. Then they made the switch to defense. And he came through as maybe the best defensive player over the last two years, a true captain. His coach Chad Statham said he may be the best leader, actual true leader he's ever had. And, uh, you know, there are games that he could have 15 plus tackles, sideline to sideline. He can see the whole field. Great combination of power and speed. Just a, a, a true leader in the, every sense of the word. Yeah, as you said, on offense, there's a lot of guys to choose from. It's hard to pick out a superstar on offense for the Warriors this year. He was the standout guy defensively for Washington. Yeah, no doubt in my mind. And then you got on the other side of the ball, Tupac Capella, just a junior tailback. Can't believe this. He averaged 7.4 yards per carry, missed two games in the season, and still almost had 2,000 on the year. Every time this guy got the ball, he was a home run threat, and not necessarily because of his speed. It was because of the moves, Tom. He had the moves. Defenders are still having nightmares about Tupac making the moves on him. Yeah, he was straight ahead. They were very simple offensively this year, running the football at Washington. See him get out to the corner here, but a lot of it was straight ahead. Make a move and get to the end zone like he did often. And then at AAA, hard to talk about anybody winning this award without talking about Braden Peterson. Maybe the fastest back in the entire state. 2,241 yards. 30 touchdowns, and he's amazingly quick, but maybe not enough credit for just churning out those tough yards as well. A lot of the credit goes to his tackles, just big guys on the tackles, making bursts. You know, a lot of people would be getting eight to 10 yard gains, but this guy, he would take it to the house. Did he have a couple of 400 yard games this season? 300 yard 300 games, plus, couple a couple 300 plus times, yard games. The close second- to, <laughs> Close to 400 on, on a couple. The second time I did it, I asked him, have you ever had a big game like this? He, yeah, yeah, a couple weeks ago I did, uh, yeah. over in uh, Rapid City Stevens. So huge year for all those guys and uh, just a phenomenal year for these guys. All right, so your candidates in the big class in South Dakota here, and the winner is? It's gotta be Seth Benson for me. Uh, the senior is heading to South Dakota State next year. I think he's gonna be a terrific FCS linebacker as well, but at the high school level, one of the best I've ever seen. 
I don't think defense gets enough credit for what they did in their part in this three-peat for Sioux Falls, Washington. All right, a defensive guy out of the gate here in 11-3A. Uh, congrats to Mr. Seth Benson. I've, I've known this kid since he was this big, and he's just gotten so big and yeah. he turned into a great football great player. Kid. So, uh, congrats to Seth Benson in 11-3A. Let's go to 11-AA in South Dakota, Jandy. And uh, it came down to Peer and Harrisburg in the championship game, which was another great championship game where Peer came back and won it. Or excuse me, where uh, Peer came back from being down to Harrisburg and won 24-21. But as you see here, Harrisburg and Peer represented. Harrisburg and, you know, there's a lot of great players across the state in this class. I mean, the records didn't reflect the greatness because there's a lot of average teams. I mean, Trevor Severson, you talk about guys like Joel Carpenter of Sturgis, one of the linemen, best linemen in the state. He's had a great year. Mitchell had their outstanding group of players as usual, but it did come down to the winners. And you've obviously considered linemen in this and defensive oh, yeah. guys. We've already seen one defensive guy. So. Yeah, last year, uh, two years ago, Matt Farniak won yeah. our player of the year in AAA. Uh, a lot of good linemen across the board. Not just about the offense, but in this case, you can't overlook these guys. Let's take a look video-wise at what these guys did. All right, let's start with Jack Anderson. He gained over 1,000 yards. Last year set the record for Harrisburg for a single season in rushing yards. This year, defenses were literally collapsing on him all year because of the absence of Hunter Headley. He turned out to be a true leader on this team despite the ups and downs of the Harrisburg season. Not many players in this class run with that power-speed combo like he did. But then there's Hunter Headley on the other side. Uh, this guy, a tremendous quarterback, and he really showed his value because when he was out of the mix, this team just wasn't the same town. Missed a couple of games, and Harrisburg had that really slow start to the season. Even slow in the middle, they made a nice comeback at the end of the year to get to the Dakota Dome. Yeah, when he came back in the playoffs, they just started winning, and not necessarily because of his great arm, but he did make an impact in the passing and the running game. A true, true great player in a Class 11 AA. And then, of course, you've got Peyton Zabel put up another monster year with numbers. They were geared to throw. Steve Steele loves to throw the ball, and boy, it's nice to have a guy like Peyton Zabel winging it for you. The 6'6 quarterback, over 2,700 yards, 30 touchdowns in the air, and this year he's a little bit of a threat to run as well, Tom. And the 64% completions. He was accurate, he had a really good group of receivers, and this is a guy that's gonna go on and play some college football, as well as college baseball, correct? Yeah, he had to find a place that he could really make an impact both on the baseball field and the football field. He found that in Augustana, uh, but just a tremendous player at the high school level. All right, your candidates in 11 AA, and, and the winner is? It's gotta be Zabel. He was such a valuable part of his team, maybe more valuable to his team than any team in the state. Uh, going into the year, they didn't know who their playmakers would be. They just knew they had a great quarterback in Zabel. Well, he made everybody else great, Lusk, Maher, Rohrbach, all those guys were better because of Peyton Zabel. And uh, yeah, he's gonna go to Augustana and do some damage there on the baseball diamond and the football field. All right, and got him to the state championship this year with that win over Harrisburg. All right, Seth Benson, Peyton Zabel, who's gonna be next when we come back. We've got our players of the year in 11A and 11B in South Dakota High School football. Midco Sports Tonight, presented by Avera Orthopedics.